Word. My name is Molly Connell and I'm the producer of this show. The things you will hear over the next 45 minutes represent the views of the F Word and the people making them. All opinions and quotations in no way represent River West Radio and are the sole responsibility of the producer, guests, and callers. River West Radio is not liable for any legal issues arising from the content of this program. All right, well, we have a great show tonight. Um, I'm going to let our guests introduce themselves. So maybe we'll start with John. John? Hi, I'm John Scatello. I'm the Associate Professor of Art at UW Fond du Lac uh, in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. I teach art, art history, and women's studies. And I uh, show my work, my own paintings and drawings, in Milwaukee and around the country. Cool, super excited to have him as a calling guest on our show tonight. And then we'll just go around the circle. And I am Melina Magnolia. I am a Milwaukee-based artist. I'm a senior at UW-Milwaukee. This is my fifth year. I'll be graduating in the spring with a BFA in drawing and painting and a minor in art history, and I also do printmaking. Um, I'm Rihanna Andrews. I'm also um, going to be a senior at UWM. I'll be graduating in a year with a BFA in um, fine arts with an emphasis in printmaking. And um, that's pretty much it, mm -hmm. uh, UWM. So, um, maybe you could guess by our um, guest description that we are having a feminist art show tonight, which is super exciting. And I wanted to start the show off just by kind of talking about the history of feminist art, um, what's happening now, what has happened, and yeah, so I think John would definitely be a good person to go to on that. Okay. If, if I were to give my cliff notes on the entire history of women's art, <laughs> uh, it would it'd take a while, but women have always been making art. And whether they were included or excluded uh, throughout the, the written history is uh, a serious point of tension and debate. Uh, we realized in the 60s that there was some definite gender bias happening, and there were many steps to correct that. So throughout the Renaissance, women were making really substantial works of art. In the Baroque period, women were making really important art. But then with the radical feminist movement itself in the 60s, feminist art started to happen, which was different simply than women making art. It was actually women, and sometimes men, making work about the issues related to the women's cause as part of the civil rights movement. And so uh, within the women's movement, uh, within the art processes, there's lots of different factions and cliques, and uh, sometimes they fight and sometimes they get along really well, and uh, sometimes they progress and sometimes they regress. And uh, it's all kind of a matter of perspective in terms of what you relate to and what's relevant at the particular moment in history. So what would you say is kind of a relevant thing in the women's art movement today? Um, today. Uh, well, it's, I, I, I think, and this is solely my opinion in terms of the, the rhetoric of feminist art, um, I think that the most important avenues of pursuit right now uh, have to do with gender and sexuality. And uh, with that said, you, you always have to look at the entire feminist movement as a very transformative movement, from uh, abolitionism to suffragism, to prohibition, uh, to feminism, and now I think uh, gender studies and uh, gay rights and uh, legal uh, marriages are really an important avenue of discussion. But with that said, there's always all sorts of different areas uh, popping up, and with things like Todd Aiken and uh, Walker repealing the equal pay uh, equal pay right law, there is kind of a, I think in Wisconsin, uh, an immediate kind of uh, bubbling and reaction to those kinds of things because the GOP in this area have been rather unfriendly to women and people who support women in their state. 
how do you think um, the Milwaukee art community has suffered from these things? Like, are there any, I guess, as opposed to our other guests as well, um, from the recent changes that you've been talking about? Uh, recent <laughs> changes in uh, like with in uh, politics? the repeal of what do you well, I, th I think it's just waking people up more. You know, what I've been seeing actually is that people have not been uh, politicized enough. And I think it's waking people up more, and that's what I'm seeing more, is now more women are starting to be more vocal about their rights and, and they need, a, you know, whether it's through activism, but a lot of times they also need a way to express themselves, whether it's through writing, music, art, you know, some sort of creative outlet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and definitely um, in terms of art, we are seeing a lot of more activist art, like, happening as opposed to, like, um, fine art and, like, that kind of... Um, historical uh, reference like painting and printmaking we're, def we're definitely seeing a lot of like street art happening and like performance art and all of that has to do with like political activism um, walkouts uh, on campuses and um, posters and wheat paste all over the city and it just that in itself is waking people up like you said um, just the art and how it's becoming more um, mainstream and easily accessible I think that's a really good point too because something that I've been struggling with is you know going between the fine line of like the gallery space which is to a certain demographic of people and then there's street art which is much more accessible to people more you know in class and gender whatever you know it depends upon which area you're going in but more people are going to see it then and it depends on what kind of impact you want to have you know to me personally like if I just shut myself in the gallery to me personally I don't feel like I'm doing as much, but if I can get it out there more and a message out there mm -hmm. further, then that's really important. So would you say you've noticed a shift in feminist art to being more political as well as women making art? Or has, I mean, I guess to John, has politics been a long part of feminist art, or are you seeing that kind of spike up? With well, you, you've kind of made a distinction, which is kind of a gray area that is part and parcel to the, mm -hmm. the whole issue, because there's there are women who make art who don't consider what they do to be feminist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, 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 the definition that you kind of laid out there is that feminist art is activist art, yeah. uh, and in, innately radical. Uh, and again, that that's a point of discussion for a lot of people, because uh, to be truthful, and it's kind of a, a sad gender bias mm -hmm. in and of the gender world, the gender studies world, is if you're a woman who's educated making art, you're considered to have, or presupp it's presupposed that you are a feminist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would argue that you're... We're not entirely free as a culture or a civilization until we get to the point where you can make art about anything you want to. It isn't automatically loaded with all sorts of dogma. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously we're not there if you look at the political situation or you look at our culture right now or the fact that uh, you know the GOP really raised their numbers by targeting women who voted for people who were in favor of the kind of things that are appalling our panelists today. Um, so I would say that, you know, you can, to be a feminist right now in this particular moment is to somehow somewhat be an activist. And it has been since the 60s, but the ideal is to be an artist, you shouldn't have to be, uh, or people shouldn't have to take your race or your gender or your sexual preference or anything into their uh, understanding of your work and have that inform their opinion at all. But again, we're not to that point yet. Yeah, so basically what you're saying is that many, almost all women artists have a stigma of feminism surrounding their art. How do you feel that, that if, I mean, is that, if that's what you're saying? Well, I, w I wouldn't say it's a stigma. I would consider it kind of a, a, a badge and a medal. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think that there is rather this automatic pre uh, presupposition, especially in graduate school in the gallery area, mm -hmm. uh, that if you're a woman, your work has to include a level of feminism in it. 
uh, I would argue that the artist needs to be aware of feminism and be mm -hmm. aware of feminist issues and be aware of women's issues and be aware of gender issues. The same way that anyone would have to be uh, as a culpable member of society aware of those things. But the fact of the matter is, if you're on the wall in school or in grad school or in a gallery, people are going to ask you what your work has to do with being a woman. And if your work is all about being a turtle, uh, <laughs> you, it, it may not, it may not have anything to do with it, but you're going to get those questions. Yeah. Um, how does that affect you all as female artists? In, in art school, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say that actually, at least at UWM, there has not been a focus on that. Mm -hmm. I would say we didn't even start talking about content, which really bothered me, actually, until we're like juniors. And I'm all of my work is very highly contextual. So that really, really bothered me. I have I've had to force people to talk about political issues in my in my art or, you know, wonder what is your art actually doing or saying. I see a, you know, I see a lot of art actually there is a lot of really political art at UWM at least. Um, but and more so than my ad I would say. <clears throat> but but I wouldn't say that it's a focus to, you know, talk about politics. If anything, yeah. I see, I do see, like, you know, a lot of very progressive, there's many progressive professors there, and a lot of their work can is very, you know, can be very political and progressive, but... I would say that us as feminists, we're actually the sore people out. I mean, I, I mean, I think there's a lot of feminists, but I think more people are just like, you know, who's this girl just complaining about, you know, these issues? Or they haven't even heard about them. They haven't even read about them, which actually I find very sad. Yeah, I think that's, uh, just to jump in quick, that's a great point because, I mean, the title of this program even is the F word because when you talk about being a feminist, it's like you'll sit in a class and the professor will ask, I have sat in your class, John Scadello, and witnessed this. Um, raise your hand if you're a feminist and everyone sinks in their seat mm -hmm. like, oh, God, yeah, they the F word. Down because no one mm -hmm. wants to, like, admit it or, like, if they or they're just really, like, almost uneducated about it, they don't really know because there's so many, like, harsh stereotypes about it, like, Nobody wants to admit, like, oh, yeah, I'm one of those people that like, <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. will do that. But it's just because they don't know. Even yeah. in women's studies classes, yeah. Yeah. it's the first thing that they ask is, how many people here are feminists? And usually, like, two people raise their hands, even that, though most of them are women. And in, in a city, you know, let alone, <laughs> and then at the end, they all raise their hand that they're feminists. Yeah because they learn more about it and they learn that it's not just these stereotypical things that women are just complaining and making up all of these you know things in the media and in society and they're not just a bunch of girls who are not shaving their armpits and don't shower and, and they're just ugly you know like they hate men yeah they hate men so much you know but no that's none of that is true so um are there any ways that you try to teach people about feminism with your art? Oh, story? definitely, 100%. Um, yeah. We're, like, I know what Melina's talking about in that um, UWM has this huge focus on technique. It's all about technique, technique, learn the technique. Um, so when we get into the actual critiques of our work and we are sitting there and we want to talk about, you know, transgender issues or women's sexuality issues and, like, the all the rest of the class is like, oh, this is done really well. I really like this color work, this line work. We're like, no, you're not. That's not what I want to hear about. Like, I want to have a, a really discussion. I want to have a discussion about transgender issues. I want to have a discussion about queer issues. And, like, they're just like, oh, well, I really like this color next to this color. And, like, it's just, it's difficult. So it's like, I feel like when we get into critiques, it's a chance for us to teach. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a chance for us to sit down in a group of our own peers and be like, this is what I think about this. This is what's going on right now. This is the issues at hand. And um, this is what we need to be talking about. This is what we need to be learning about. And so it's a chance for us to actually, like, almost have the spotlight for a little bit in our class and kind of like talk about it and like um, inform people about it. Mm -hmm. uh, a really funny thing is happening for me right now. It's kind of an epiphany because uh, up until rather recently, UWM was not known at all uh, as a technique-centered school. And in fact, in the, I would say the early 90s, it was a bastion for progressive feminism. Um, it, would, it would, in fact, I would say a, a bastion for progressive radical feminism. 
and it, it seems obviously that that has really kind of uh, gone away um, and that it's probably centered based on the student centered learning and the students who are coming simply aren't interested in it because they're not having uh, any kind of exposure prior to getting to school uh, and what they think they need for making art and what they really need for making art are very different and it, it causes uh, a great deal of consternation within the faculty who I'm sure would love to get the content immediately mm -hmm. uh, but have to deal with people who don't know the basics of what they're supposed to do first I agree so kind of having that boomerang in, in my lifetime, and I'm really honestly not that old, is uh, kind of surprising. Because up into the 90s and 2000s, it was the opposite way. And now it seems like with the change in faculty and turnover, uh, that that is uh, that has obviously changed. Yeah, it's sad. I'd like to bring that back. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> it's it's sometimes yeah, really like pushing and pulling and 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 what I'm trying to do is to actually you know yeah, it's like the, they're talking about technique, which I think is really important, and you need to know you know the technique in order to depict something in the way that it needs to be depicted or you want to get across so that people can understand it but you know it's at this point where I'm like yes I know I can paint and draw but how can I depict this in a way that is successful for my idea and I think that should have had you know a lot more precedence um, so I guess how is your feminist like would you um, Call yourself feminist artists. Yes. I don't, okay. We're we're pretty blatant <laughs> feminist artists. Oh, yes. um, how would you say that you translate that to the artist community of Milwaukee? Like out ju outside of UWM, what is the response to that? Um, is it that same turnaround that you're seeing, like John was talking about, at the university, um, or is there more acceptance outside of the university setting for feminist art? It's really hard to say. I think it depends on where you go. Yeah, it really depends on the venue. Rihanna oh, has been yeah, Br Rihanna has been discluded <laughs> from shows because of because her of imagery. Art, yeah. Um, some some galleries love it. Other galleries aren't too keen on it. And I think that also has to do with because it's very radical. So what are some of the radical components to your art? That um, well, the one that Melina was talking about specifically, it was um, an all-inclusive print portfolio um, that UWM um, collaborated with UW Parkside with. And every student in um, this one class at UWM and every student in this one class at UW Parkside made a print. And then we um, sent them all together and sorted them out. And then every single person in each class got a print of every single person. So you, at the end, you ended up with a collection of everybody else's prints. Well, the deal was that we were supposed to have this gallery show at UW Parkside, and every single print was supposed to be in it. Well, the show was ended up, um, it was titled N Junk, like N apostrophe junk. So I decided to make a dildo because it's junk <laughs> and eventually it gets thrown away and is junk. So um, I did, um, it was a lithograph, a stone lithograph um, of this just, I thought, really beautifully rendered <laughs> dildo. So um, I actually sent, sent it in. Everybody at UWM loved it. Like people were asking me for additional prints and stuff like that. And um, so our professor sent them out to UW Parkside and then um, she took me aside one day and said, yes, the um, gallerist at UW Parkside doesn't want to show your print. She doesn't want it up in the gallery. And I was like, oh, are you serious? And she's like, yeah, she, but she told me that you could make a new print if you want. And I was like, absolutely not. Like, she's either gonna show it or she's not gonna show it. I'm not gonna create a whole new piece of work just so I can be in her gallery. So a lot of it does have to do with venue. I mean, some of it is like really accepted. We get together and like, we can come to a place like, you know, River West Radio and like talk <laughs> freely about it. And like, or we can like go to different places where, you know, we're accepted, but then there's certain places where you just get to a gallery and they're just like, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna mm -hmm. hang this up no and matter no matter what it's about even if it has like really intellectual content like right. I'm just not gonna put it up right and I think that has to do with especially specifically yours the ongoing suppression of women's sexuality and that women don't yes. masturbate they they don't <laughs> our, like sex our show last week was <laughs> sex toy 101 um yeah have I mean have you experienced anything like that 
With your um, own? I've had maybe professors say, I don't, I did, I did actually one with the same content, but it was different. This was about a, like a year and a half ago. It, it was also a print. It was a wood cut, a large scale wood cut, just of this woman with her, her, le <laughs> this, her legs um, spread and she's touching herself. And um, so also about women's sexuality specifically. Um, and my professor at the time, uh, who's super awesome. He's a really successful artist, actually. But he was like, I don't know. I think that's too overt, you know. And then I just, I'm like, whatever. I'm doing it anyway. So I did it. And he really liked the way it turned out, actually. So I've had people say, what? You're going to do that? And, and then I do it. And then yeah. they end up liking <laughs> it. But yeah. And they, or they think I'm doing it just for shock value, which I'm not. And then you almost can't even get into the content of it. Right. Because, because people are just like, oh, my God. I can't. I don't even comprehend. And it's like you're sitting there trying to talk about women's issues and sexuality and the suppression of women's sexuality, like all of it. And like they're just like, oh, my God, that is a vagina. Like, what? <laughs> What am I looking at? And it's so hard to get away from like any kind of. I, I see vaginas in everything. Yeah. Yeah. Most people see phallic symbols. I see vaginas everywhere, <laughs> and especially in art. I'm like, I think that's supposed to be a vagina. I don't know. And I always wonder if the artist was intentional in that. Um, yeah. I actually had uh, a similar thing happen with my paintings at, at UW Madison uh, at a all UW uh, faculty art show. And uh, they asked me to move my painting because they thought it would be offensive to the Board of Regents who was coming through. And the explanation was that uh, they have a very conservative group of Regents who may take offense to the painting, at which I explained it was uh, a painting of Salome, who's from the Bible, mm -hmm. and that it was actually biblical, and if they were actually conservative, they would understand it. And uh, actually, to be truthful, if they read the title and they understood the painting, then they would be offended. But uh, I ended up being forced to move the painting if I wanted to be included in the show. That's really interesting, too, because there is such a long history of religious and biblical paintings and appropriating that, too. So that's even that's very surprising to me. So. Right. Well, there's appropriation. There's appropriation and there's appropriate appropriation. Yeah. I was walk the line there. And uh, <laughs> but the, the fact that I had a, uh, a scantily clad uh, female form that wasn't sexual uh, was deemed automatically unoffensive, or uh, actually deemed offensive, rather, and therefore I needed to deal with it. So, um, what are some of the more radical... Have you done any kind of radical collaborations with other female artists, or have you heard of anything like that going on? Um, mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that, and... Mm -hmm. If you wanted to talk about that. Well, I'm the co-founder of Positive Body Project, uh, which is a group in Milwaukee. And we started as an art group, actually. We're, you know, we were really, really sick of seeing really negative advertisements targeted towards women, you know, and uh, just everywhere you go. You know, you need to fix this. You need to look this way. You need to be this thin. If you're not this, if you're super thin, then you're sickly. If you're if you're a size eight, you're plus size. You know, just everything. So we are really sick of this. So we wanted to make positive images and put them out into public spaces. Um, and then it actually turned into a group with met people with many different skills. Unfortunately, we haven't been as active as we were right now, but uh, so we did zines about rape culture. We also, and we did events in the union at the UW, at UWM about rape culture and how to combat rape culture and about consent. And then we also did mud stenciling in public spaces. So that's when you actually make a stencil and then instead of spray paint, which is permanent and not good for the environment use mud which is completely legal which is awesome when cops come up to you hey what is that it's mud go away you know <laughs> and they can't do anything because it's perfectly legal it's not permanent it can stay up for years if it's in a covered area um and yeah environmentally friendly and we did a couple 
we did uh, one that was uh, different images so we all designed different images came together and we made the stencils and they all said you're beautiful it's society that's effed um, and then we had one and then I did one that was a rosary in the shape of ovaries that said keep your rosaries off my ovaries and that actually ended up being really interesting, especially around the um, UW-Milwaukee campus, because before I even knew about the Positive Body Project, I would see these mud stencils around. Like, I would see, and it was um, more of a plus-size woman that said, like, um... It wasn't even, she wasn't even she wasn't that even plus, plus, but everyone but read yes, her as plus-size. Yes. She was just curvy. But she, yeah, <laughs> she was, like, average. Plus-size <laughs> compared to, like, you know, like, in the society media statement-wise. But, um... I saw one of these and it was um, in the more public area because UWM is not just like an art college like we get the business students and the, all those so like in the union is kind of where everyone like cohabitates so um, actually I saw one of these mud stencils and then maybe like two days later in yellow chalk mm -hmm. there was like the McDonald's M mm -hmm. on like the butt of this woman and it said like you're wrong fatty or like something on it so like it said this the scale doesn't lie fatty oh yeah and it had like the <clears throat> the golden arches like in like yellow chalk like on this woman's butt and it was just really interesting to me that like were like they were trying to put out this really positive like um positive like women's image like trying to make women feel better and like just create this really like lovely thing and then the people would just deface it that way and like take it there and it's like they went out of their way to like make these women feel bad and they proved our points yeah you know in in the long run that these that these issues are still ongoing. Yeah, I mean, in a way, it kind of gave a perfect example to anyone who would read that. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, right in their face. So. Mm -hmm. um, well, that sounds like a really great project. Um, what other, have you done any other mud stenciling or any other things with that recently? I have not recently. I've been waiting for it to get warmer. Yeah. Because it's really cold <laughs> right now. <laughs> so, but then I, I want to, I've been thinking about some, but I hadn't gotten around to do it. It's super easy. I'm going to do yeah. some workshops uh, when it gets to spring. That's awesome. Good to know. Um, let's see. Why don't we just kind of talk about your art? Like, what exactly it is you do? Um, like you, do, you do printmaking, right? Yep, uh, I'm a printmaker, and it's um, it's actually really funny how I kind of got started because I have been doing this like women's sexuality art and um, for years and years and years. And when I started at UWM, and um, my very first um, wood cutting class, relief printmaking, is actually when I met Melina, and <laughs> she was um, my art soulmate. We found <laughs> out. We found out. But I was doing this um, very large scale print. It was four wood cuts and each wood cut was seven layers, which makes seven colors. So it's a lot of carving. And it created this kaleidoscope. And in the center of the kaleidoscope was a woman's facial expression as she was orgasming. And I was trying to portray just like how it feels or like kind of like the, um, the psychedelicness or like the interesting feeling that you get when you have an orgasm and um melina came up to me after class and was like oh my god it's so great to meet another feminist artist and i was just kind of like what <laughs> what like oh and then like we started talking and we became really good friends and now it's like i realized like oh my god i've been making feminist art all along and i was just uneducated about the movement like i had like i just never took a women's studies class or never like got into it or anything like that and now I've taken so many classes and like so many more art classes and so many more women's studies classes and I love it and I'm just it was just interesting that I gravitated towards that without even knowing it and mm -hmm. it took someone else to tell me like hey you're a feminist artist to be like oh yeah holy crap <laughs> it was interesting I'm like read this book and this book and, and then she did like that week yeah. which was awesome <laughs> So, um, as far as, like, that goes, I mean, a lot of my art is focused on um, the suppression of women's sexuality. I do a lot of, like, really blatant um, sexual imagery, which is another reason that it's usually um, denied access to different galleries and stuff like that. Um, like I said, I've done dildos and I've done women orgasming and just, I just really like to put it out there. I mean, we have sex and we masturbate and we enjoy it and we love it. And it's it's a part of us as, a, as much as it is a part of any man like they're just oh we masturbate every day yeah so do i like, <laughs> <laughs> and then there's men who just aren't you know you know and it's not and there's people who are asexual you know and i think these are the issues that people don't even realize yeah. or think about but yeah and then are you finished with your oh yeah your <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> just want to make sure. Uh, my art also, my art deals with gender and sexuality, and it goes across the board in subject matter. Um, part, some of it references uh, historical women, so women's history um, and women who have led us to liberation throughout the years and different movements. Some of my work um, is very blatantly sexual. Some of my work, um, yeah, deals with trans issues, um, gender queer issues, uh, things like that. Um, the history of cross dressing, you know, that's a whole other topic now. That's like, oh, what's cross dressing when you're trying to dismantle gender? Um, but then my project that I'm working on right now is, it's a smaller. It's a smaller series, and when I mean small, I mean like 10 pieces. That's small to me um, and what I want to accomplish because I just don't have the time to accomplish it right now because I'm not going to be living in Milwaukee for that long anymore, but is representing members of Milwaukee's queer community and queer, you know, being this umbrella term of uh, gay, you know, so homosexual, bisexual, um, it could be asexual, yeah. transgender, gender queer, you know, this huge umbrella term of, you know, and I want to get different classes, different races and ethnicities, um, you know, so that's what I'm trying to do right now. Um, so I actually get to sit, to sit with people and, and talk with them and, to, and kind of collaborate with them, but not exactly and represent them. That's really cool. Um, how do you go about finding people or is this people you know or is it people that you kind of know through somebody else mm -hmm. how are you approaching people some people i know and i put a f facebook event up at one point i'm like please invite your friends please and then i had know some some through other people that i don't really know and I'm, and i tell my friends about this and then they're like oh there's this person and like i said i'm trying to get different ages and you know so if so I'm trying to get diversity because I'm trying to show how the how queer communities are very diverse and it's not just stereotypical flamboyant, you know, ness that there's, you know, and it's very segregated too. So it's kind of because the city is so segregated. So it's also trying to kind of bring a means like, I'm, and I say kind of just because I don't have as much time as I would like to. Um, but as a means to try to bring these people together, I'm still looking for a venue to show the work in June. Um, but, and that's um, also using different printmaking processes mixed with my painting. Even in a lot of the printmaking processes aren't necessarily overt. So it could be literally cutting into the panel or, you know, doing parts of relief or even drawing as if, as if I'm etching into a piece of copper or dry pointing into copper. Yeah. <laughs> Scratching at it. Scratching. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's a lot of, um, I mean, feminist art is so broad. Like, it's yeah. such a broad term. I mean, like, I do sexuality, and Melina does gender issues, and recently I did, um, actually this was pretty hard for me, and uh, it didn't quite turn out exactly how I wanted it to, but I actually did, um, a hard ground um, etching, that's where you like scratch into copper, of, um, I actually did a portrait of the man who raped me, which was pretty difficult, but I mean, that's like, that's a huge like women's issue because women are raped every day, like all the time, and a lot of them don't even report it, and um, I'm actually really disappointed in myself because when it happened to me, I didn't report it. So this piece for me was a way of working out my own like issues and like, my own feelings towards the subject, but at the same time, I mean, it was bringing light to it as well, and like letting other women know, like, hey, like it's you should like. I know it's hard, but like, it's just it's something that we have to deal with, and it's something that we have to look at, and like people need to be aware of it. Like it happens, and it's it's a horrible, horrible thing. So it's like for me, it was just kind of like um, a double project in that I could work out my own issues with everything that happened, and work out my own feelings, and then still like make it almost a conversation piece because people would be like oh who's this and it's like i'd have to sit down with someone and say oh this is the guy who raped me and then like i'd get a lot of shock and awe and like oh my god or like whoa and like some people would just kind of like you could see them like not want to talk about it like they were just kind of like they'd shrink down and they'd be mm -hmm. like oh okay <laughs> and then mm -hmm. other people would be like oh my god like they'd be so inspired and be like well why did you choose to do this like what do you why would you even 
bring this out? Like, why would you even want to talk about it? And then that was when we started the conversations and could really get into it. So I think art is also another way to bring, yeah, discussion. Yeah, absolutely. And I, yeah, and I have tried, I've been trying to do work around rape as well. Uh, my processes haven't been working necessarily because printmaking is just iffy. Um, like in some, some of the processes that you're dealing with all different kinds of like oils and solvents and <laughs> burning techniques. And sometimes they just don't work out. So I have to change it. But to me, it's like making women-centered art and about women's issues is just a given because I personally don't know how I can't and when she talks about art it was like or sorry you're the rape that's exactly it because I think about how every day I walk home at night by myself and and, and that's rape culture in that we all women you know we have to think about what kind of shoes we're wearing in case we have to run we have to be aware of what time of night it is we have to be aware that we're alone we have to be aware of what we're wearing we have to be aware of how much we've been consuming because if we get raped these are the questions that are going to be asked of us too what did you do to prevent your rape i don't know this guy just <laughs> or girl you know was just all up on me I didn't yeah. think I had anything to do with it. I didn't ask for this. People don't ask to be raped because then it wouldn't be rape. It would be consensual sex. Yeah. Um, John, what are some art pieces that you use in your women's studies classes to kind of provoke this conversation about feminism? Well, the, the class that I'm, I'm teaching right now and I taught just minutes ago uh, really deals with the, uh, the development of the radical movement within the feminist art circle. So there are, you know, everything basically points to these kinds of conversations. Um, and they are broken down in between, you know, uh, work to deal with body, work that deal with sexuality, work to deal with race within feminism. Um, so it's, it's, there's so much out there that, and people have no idea at times that there are even feminist points of view with works that they that are, that are really familiar with. Um, uh, I think the, the ones that provoke the most conversation are works by the, the most radical body artists uh, mm -hmm. in performance, uh, like Carolee Schneeman mm -hmm. and her work in Curious Scroll. Mm -hmm. and, and that might have something to do with the shock value, but it also has to do with the the lack of a woman to have control of her body. And, you know, once you get past the, you know, what she's doing, what the image looks like, and what the performance was, to, to point out to a group of people that up until 1994, it was, there were still some states that had uh, legal marital rape. You could rape mm -hmm. your spouse based on the legal legality of your marital contract um, people people start freaking out and they don't realize that you know in the 60s and 70s women had to literally take possession of their bodies in our in our culture and most of the most transgressive or provocative work has to do with that you know if uh, grandma and grandpa were having an argument about sex grandpa could punch grandma as provided he didn't want to he didn't do any permanent damage so then he could have sex with her, depending on what state they lived in. And, you know, that's within our lifetimes, within our parents' lifetimes, within our grandparents' lifetimes. And we've made some changes, but we were lacking the awareness of the history. And it's a very shallow history. It doesn't go far back. Mm -hmm. So the so works that really are pushing that envelope uh, to make people realize what's going on are probably the most immediately impactful. I think even today, people, you know, even though that might not be legal now, still in a court, how is someone really going to believe, oh, yeah, you can be raped by your husband or your boyfriend? You know, they don't, a lot of people, you know, I've even seen, you know, when you're in a relationship with someone, you know, your partner just automatically assumes then, after you've been together for a while, that they have ownership over your body and they can just grab you whenever they want. You know, and not even ask, is this okay? 
So you lost control of your body because this person just thinks that they can touch you whenever they want, that they can have sex with you whenever they want, and it doesn't matter if you want it at that time. And, and a lot of people don't think you can be sexually assaulted by your partner. So, I mean, that's a history, too, that's really important. And it's important to bring up today to prevent sexual assault. Yeah, well, I think a lot of it is important to bring up today. As John was saying, we have a like serious lack of awareness. Um, in a lot of my classes, which aren't even um, feminist classes per se, but just like these um, history of art classes, not fine art history, but like just um, art that's going on today, like modern art, we study things that are happening around today and things that have happened like more in recent history. And there was just a small section of the class that was on feminism. And, you know, we talked about obviously like Judy Chicago and like just the really obvious ones just to bring it to light and then we would hold this large discussion and the class is open to art students as well as non-art students and um, it was actually really like almost a huge eye-opener because these non non-art students who were never forced or not forced but like who never like chose to study like the like history of like the feminist movement or anything like that um, we actually had a girl in our class um, talk about how she didn't understand what their problem was because it wasn't that bad. Like a, a female like said this, she's like, well, I just don't understand what the feminists in the 60s and 70s were doing because it obviously wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. And like everyone else just like retorted and was just, yeah, exactly. And was just like, are you serious? <laughs> like, and it is, it's a lack of awareness and a lack of education about the history and how they changed things. And like the reason you have it even as well as you do now is because of them. Mm -hmm. And I think the, a lack of that history is, I think it's it, a part of it is getting is better. Like, you know, parts of it are getting better, but a lack of knowledge on this history, I think is purposeful in some aspects so that we can keep suppressing women's rights. Yeah, um, our other host that we have on the show usually, Tiffany, she really, that's why she's a great guy great person to have on the show because she brings in so much theory and so much history and when we do our shows we really try to incorporate that into our show to maybe somebody who's listening to this show who's like thinks of feminism as the F word um, can understand like why we need to have this and why female solidarity is really important I've, I've personally met a, a lot of resistance in having the show and having things like all women performance shows, all women art spaces that I'm trying to create. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been hard for me because some of it is women coming up to me saying, why are you doing that? That's just making things worse. Oh like thing, things like that, mm -hmm. pretty much. And I'm just confused by that. Like I'm really confused by that because- well, Our ignorance <laughs> has a lot to do with the or is coupled with the brainwashing that happens. I know brainwashing sounds like a really hard term, but I, I, <laughs> I think the leanness is we live in a culture of rape, and we really do. Look, look at our pop culture influences from television and advertising and how women are glorified, sexualized, and molested consensually and erotically all the time. And... You, know, you don't even have to go looking for lingerie as if you're near the Super Bowl. Uh, there are horrible examples all the time. And it's not, it really has nothing to do with what sex you are. It's really a matter of just being considerate of other people mm -hmm. yeah. and understanding you know, what's fair for someone has to be fair for everyone else. Have you guys met any resistance from like other female artists because of having like a strong feminist tone to your art? I don't think I've met any like resistance like where they were like you shouldn't be making this or like just any yeah. like serious like um that's what I'm looking for, like, a opposition to it. But I've um, met a few women who were just like, I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> like that too. Or why is that important? Yeah, why is that important? Or, like, you know, um, you draw, like, or, like, the print I did of the, like, kaleidoscope um, orgasm print. It was just a lot of people were like, 
you don't get it, that's just like slutty. Like, and it's. <laughs> Which is another issue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a whole other show. But yeah, that's a whole other show. <laughs> just on the word well, sluts. Well, we actually, we actually have a um, rape culture show coming up. So it's in the works. It's happening. Awesome. Um, but just the last 10 minutes here, I'm going to let everyone kind of wrap up what they want to say if they have any final comments. So we'll start reverse order. I guess. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't know. I mean, I basically just want to say that, like, feminist art is happening and it's a huge thing and people need to be a part of it and I think a lot of that is just bringing awareness like we need to bring awareness to people who like don't like learn about it or who like haven't had the chance to be educated about it or don't want to be educated about it and just bring it up I mean mm -hmm. it's our job to just be like hey like this is happening this is going on like women are being raped we're being judged by what we wear we're like um there are other people out there and like John said we just need to like bring it up and be mm -hmm. aware that like we need to respect each other as people yeah I agree yeah cuz like I said I feel like it's like my calling I can't just not make art like that I don't feel like could benefit someone or educate someone because all of these issues are happening. Violence is still happening. It's as if liter these issues literally affect millions of people's lives. People, not just women, even. Mm -hmm. And to, for me not to comment on it is to collaborate with it, and I can't do that. So I think, yeah, it, to just bring more awareness to it and to bring more awareness to the history of women in art. Like Jonna said, women have always made art. They just haven't, you know, gotten proper credit for it, blah, 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 all those things. But it's very important. John? Uh, I guess if I'm going to uh, inject some parting words from my perspective, it's that one, uh, feminism is everyone's issue. It's not just... Uh, an issue from someone from a, a woman's perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, men are, you know, innately tied to their partners, to their children, to their mothers, to their grandmothers, and it's therefore our responsibility as well. Uh, and that the, if I'm going to be esoteric, the, the business of art or the purpose of art is to aesthetically inspire, educate, and uplift. And that's exactly what feminist art does on every level. It educates people to the women's cause, it inspires people to react to it, and it educates uh, all the viewers to the history and the future of women in the arts and, and feminist art. Those are some pretty hard-hitting last words. Good. Um, I just also wanted to mention um, if there are any events, any gallery shows you all have coming up at all, or any that you know of that would be great to check out um i don't right now uh okay. because i've just been solely working on work right now mm -hmm. but if anyone has a venue that i could put my series in in june you can email me at melina.magnolia.art at gmail.com <laughs> um yeah i don't have any currently either just because it's it's finals time and everyone's it's crunch <laughs> like everyone's trying to get stuff done but um uwm is always hosting um, our galleries, like we have, I think at least three <laughs> just tied with this with the campus, if not more. more. Yeah, and like they're constantly hosting, so you can definitely mm -hmm. check that out. It's always on their web page. And uh, oh, in June, I'm part of a show. Uh, it's called the Milwaukee Dolls. Uh, the the subtitle is Art Fags, and it's actually uh, five very uh, pro feminist male artists. Uh, dealing with the deconstruction of pop culture through kind of a radical punk perspective. And uh, currently, I'm going to be uh, planning on showing a series of self-portraits that I did, dealing with uh, my own mastectomy uh, that recently happened where I lost my left breast. And uh, where is that going to be? Oh, well, it starts in Milwaukee in June and then travels around the country. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it will be I'm in the Buffalo building. Okay, well, and that's their what space. That's definitely something to look forward to. Um, I just wanted to take these last few minutes to thank you all for coming on thank the show. You. Thanks. Um, and also mentioned um, December fifteenth, I will be having a kind of women art 
night. So any artists looking to just kind of do an installation somewhere um, or any female musicians out there looking to play a show, uh, message me on the event page or check out our Facebook page and message me through there or Danielle or Tiffany if you know them um, if you'd like to be part of that. And once again, thank you to everyone on the show. Super awesome show. Um, and I think that's going to wrap it up for tonight. Unless there's any final comments. Final, final comments. <laughs> thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thanks. All right. Have a great night, everyone.